or not to bioactivate? That is the question. Welcome back to the channel this week. Thank you for everybody who sticks with it every week and hangs out with me. For everybody who's just finding the channel, thank you for coming and checking us out today. Uh, before you leave, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, the notification bell, and we'll just keep plugging on through, and I'd like to see you all come back next week. But this week, I thought I would step out of my comfort zone and talk about bioactive enclosures, which is something I'm really familiar uh, with. None of it, really. Actually... I, I make it up as I go. But anyway, I thought we would talk about the pros and cons to bioactive versus naturalistic versus minimalistic keeping as it pertains to carpet pythons. Now this tank is going to be for an African bullfrog, so I don't have it planned and arranged in mind for a carpet python. But the concept of bioactive involve having drainage layers, healthy living soil with isopods, springtails, cleanup crew, live plants, LED lights, UV lights, the whole nine and making it a little slice of an ecosystem. It's very similar to like doing saltwater tanks, but for reptiles. And if you know anything about saltwater tanks, those folks spend a lot of time and a lot of money prepping those massive and expensive saltwater aquariums for, you know, their $20, $50 fish. So the investment isn't in the animal. The investment is in time and the enclosure. So think about that when you're trying to make the decision about going bioactive because you're not only keeping the animal, but you're also maintaining the ecosystem. So the amount of work goes through the roof. You've got other living things in there to keep in mind, other parameters to pay attention to, humidity, lighting, food for your critters, things like that. And whether or not the animal you ultimately intend on housing in here is just going to crush your plants or not thrive. Ultimately, you don't know until you try it, but because it is such a popular thing these days, you can ask around and get a lot of good information. Don't look to me as any resource of bioactive stuff. I'm still winging it and making it up and learning as I go. But I thought I would try my hands at it. It's going really well. Uh, I've got springtails in here. I've been growing this grass from seed for the last week and a half, and it needs a trim. So now um, I thought I would show you some styles of keeping that I'm a little more familiar with. So let's look at naturalistic next. All right, so Smokey here decided to join us to uh, let us take a peek at her naturalistic enclosure. Say hi. And bye. Now, the reason why I wanted to show you her enclosure is because I consider this a good demonstration of naturalistic. It isn't bioactive. I don't have active soil. I don't have drainage layers. I don't have cleanup crews and, you know, isopods and springtails in here. But I do have, you know, naturalistic furniture. I've got bits of wood, fake plants, some more hides, some more driftwood. Easy girl. You see that? She's excited. Um, and what it does is it, without being super labor intensive, mimics somewhat of a natural setting. And that's the only goal of naturalistic is to just make it aesthetically pleasing without having to go over the top and elaborate like bioactive seams. I don't have any crazy LED lights. I'm not trying to keep plants alive. In fact, my uh, silk plants are the easiest plants I've ever had to keep alive. Dad joke there for you. And, uh, and I don't have to worry about the animals crushing plants or anything if it doesn't work. I haven't overcommitted to it and uh, I'm not, you know, overdoing the enclosure. Um, the one thing I will say about naturalistic is although it looks nice, it does make it harder for me to keep this environment clean. Um, bioactive, you have the part-time minor assistance of a cleanup crew. You're still picking up the big chunks of stuff, uh, but ultimately you can rely on a lot of that stuff to get cleaned up, you know, the little bits and pieces you don't go for. Whereas in here, I've got to turn things over, I've got to move plants, I've got to move logs, I've got to really dig around to find feces and stuff that needs cleaning. So there's benefits to both. Um, in my opinion, certain species really enjoy having things to uh, spend their day hiding in and exploring and smelling and textures and stuff. So my Kribo obviously is a great candidate for something like that, a very active species. Uh, although this time of year, not so much, and she in particular, might be gravid. So she's not very active right now, but don't tell anyone. Shh, because I'm not sure, but I think so. But anyway, all secrets aside, it looks good. It functions for the animal. It does pose some challenges for me, um, 
But all in all, I would say naturalistic is a nice happy medium in between bioactive and just minimalistic, the basic sterile type keeping. So keep that in mind when you're thinking of setting up a naturalistic enclosure for your animals. Uh, carpet pythons in a naturalistic setting do very well. Um, when they get bigger, you know, big pieces of wood and things to support their body weight or perching uh, is great to think about and put into play. There's a lot, there's a lot you can do. Um, carpet pythons being bulletproof, kind of tolerant all around animals, they'll put up with whatever you give them really. As long as the, the climate is right, you can't go too elaborate they'll enjoy it. It's just how much work you want to do, how much cleaning you want to do, how much decoration you want to apply. And, uh, you know, you got to ask yourself, what's important to me? Is it important that my cage looks nice, that the enclosure looks nice if people come to visit? Is it important that the species in particular has certain stimuli in there that they really use a lot? And, and then just go from there. And, and really, as long as you're meeting those animals' needs, um, you really can't go wrong. So, um, food for thought. Now let's look at a very minimalistic, bare bones style of keeping. All right, now getting down to real, real basics and dumbing it down, we have a very, very simple rudimentary enclosure. Water bowl, paper bedding, hide. The hide is big enough and sturdy enough for the animal to go on top for a second layer. Nothing too crazy, right? So this is what I would consider a no frills, kind of basic meet the requirements type of enclosure with a focus on being able to keep the environment clean. Paper bedding allows sterility, uh, ceramic water bowl and plastic hides allow me to disinfect and keep things clean. And to me that's important when I'm talking about breeding. If I'm introducing animals in between other cages, I need cleanliness. I don't want any you know, bacteria transfer, pathogen transfer, any of that stuff. So to me, the advantage of keeping things sterile and minimalistic is if you intend to breed, you can control any unwanted variables a little bit better. You can keep a closer eye on, on things and, and just kind of keep your collection a little bit healthier and cleaner. I'm not saying you can't do that in naturalistic and bioactive, but it takes a lot more work. Now, at first glance, I know a lot of people are going to say, well, why are you doing that bioactive and that naturalistic, but you've got this rudimentary? Well, um, you know, to put it real simple, carpet pythons just don't care. Um, in fact, they do really, really well in man-altered habitats in the wild where there are tons of rodents abundant. They're constantly found in attics of people's roofs over in Australia. So, you know, as much as it is wonderful to see a beautiful setup lush perch tall enclosure with a carpet python draped over a branch looking like a slice of australia um i would have to give up about 80 percent of my collection to do that for just one animal now some people are going to then argue well you shouldn't have that many animals well you shouldn't be telling me what to do i am going to do what i want to do now if the animal's needs are met and they're healthy and they're thriving and they're breeding and they're staying away from ailments and they're getting vet checks as needed if needed and life is good then to me we're good um these animals get to go out for sunshine exercise during the better weather and you know they do really really well and if they weren't breeding they wouldn't be thriving since they're breeding we must be checking some good boxes so um you know the ethics of any of these can be debated Till we're blue in the face but if somebody's going to keep how they want to keep and their animals are doing well and they're thriving then that's all you can ask for meet the basic requirements and take care of your animals anything else is extra so i'm no bioactive expert but i've been learning a lot lately and i thought i would lend my perspective on what i consider the three main styles of keeping and how it pertains to something like a carpet python to me they can work for carpets all of the above. Just know that one solution will require a lot more work from you, financial investment, and time. All right, well, I'm going to turn these lights off and let these girls go back to sleep. It is the middle of breeding season, and it is nighttime. And I'm going to quit squatting because I am uncomfortable. And, uh, yeah, I will catch you all next week.
Later.